Today's project was a really fun one. Uh, I carved a pumpkin, which I then wood burned and painted. So to begin in with, I carved the uh, wood block into a cylinder, uh, which allowed me to then figure out how I, the exact shape I wanted it to be. It's, um, I really like this project because it allowed me to practice a lot detail work in a safe environment. Like, um, you'll see later when I start making the groove for the sections of uh, the uh, pumpkin. That helped me a lot to practice things that will be useful for fine detail, but in a way that is not risky in the same way b since this project is in the more um, a pumpkin can be lopsided it can be non-symmetrical without it being noticeable or any type of problems because pumpkin are kind of a weird plant so it felt really good to have a project that is somewhat complicated but very simple in the same time The plan, the de level of detail that I had to do was difficult, but the execution of that was easy since there were no, there was no stress involved. It was difficult, but stress-free. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And uh, one thing I like about this project also, that it helped with the mood is that uh, I was trying a new supplier of wood, for me at least, instead of uh, Amazon, uh, instead of per buying my wood on Amazon, I'm now going to have a local local seller that I found. So uh, I'm going to, the, the wood will have traveled less, so it's going to be better for in the environment. And it has the advantages of being a lot cheaper like significantly so so i'm really glad i managed to find it it's local it's so much relative it's one city over but uh, it's night and day in terms of knowing where it comes from and being able to have it cheaper also so uh, once i made the cylinder i started working on making the top of the pumpkin here, basically, I'm just removing the top layer all the way to the stem. I fell in a good rhythm here. Uh, I was using the corner of a rounded chisel to gouge away material while, pivot while spinning the pumpkin. Uh, this let me remove basically all the material fairly easily compared to what I would have expected for this operation. If I compared to the other times I had something vaguely similar to do in my projects. So, um, but at some point, uh, because of the angle, uh, the wood was harder to remove th with the same angle. So I started to remove, to uh, make chips, to shape chips, and then remove them with the knife afterwards in a layered way, so to speak. And uh, with that, I was able to go all the way to the stem quite easily. I'm uh, happy about the way I did that. Here I might, if I had more, I feel like the stem I made was too short for me to be able to add any form of details to it. So maybe if I do that another time, I might try to, I don't know, glue additional materials on it or... Because I wouldn't want to use more of that thick of block just to have more details on a stem. That would be very wasteful. But I feel like it would be more interesting if there was more shape. So maybe I could have a, some of my offcuts I could glue on top of the part I'm doing to stretch the stem or I'm not really positive what I would do exactly but uh, 
I would like to do things like that. Once the stem was reached, uh, I, um, I rounded off the edge and started working on the bottom. Here on the bottom, basically I was just sh sharpening the, um, that's how I could would describe it, but yes, sharpening the pumpkin. So each edge I would go over to make it not pointed at the bottom. So sharpening is not the right word. How do I describe it? Basically I was removing material while it's go just going around uh, in a um, scissoring motion. I don't know. My thing, I was using the, the knife like a scissor blade. So that, that was the movement I was making. You can see what right there with my thumb uh, of uh, my uh, left hand. I'm kind of using that as a pivot for my knife uh, to make a scissoring motion, which wi with which I was able to remove a lot of materials around the uh, around the pumpkin, and it uh, it was really useful. It was a good movement. It was kind of annoying towards the end because I it kind of formed a point where I was at working but that point wouldn't go away I, I had to do um it was difficult to remove the point uh, once I was satisfied with a shape other than of course the point part of that process has been cut from uh, this uh, commentary uh, when I edited I was a bit intense in terms of cutting because uh, at some point I felt like it was redundant there was too many tiny tiny cuts that we can't really tell the difference immediately so there's a jump at some point like the, the moment you see me start drawing uh, on the bottom that's where the cut was it's uh, not yet but probably soon So while we're waiting for that, um, I'm going to start talking about the process for um, the details I'm going to add later. So I've been, I wanted to do something detailed, something, um, but I didn't want to do a pattern because all of the work, all the wood burning I'd done so far were patterns, so the scales of a fi or of a snake or things of the nature. So I wanted something precise to practice smooth movement, but I didn't really know what to do. So because it's a pumpkin, because it's Halloween, I decided to make this a ritual pumpkin. I call it. So each, so I used a, I inspired myself a wiki owl. And I designed a bunch of sigils, it, at least that's how Wikipedia called it, where I would smush together a bunch of letters to form symbols. Uh, the letters being taken from a word, basically, to give the meaning of the sigils, so to speak. Uh, the process of designing that was really fun. And uh, I have now a ritual pumpkin that I can use as part of a cultist's disguise or something along those lines. So uh, I'm quite happy about it. It was a fun process. But here you can see me carving the grooves in between the, uh, the pumpkin's sections. Uh, I made seven grooves, so seven sections. Each... Uh, basically, the way I carved those grooves was two parallel lines on each side of the pumpkin that I made as deep as I could with this knife. Uh, and then I did another pass where I just held the knife at an angle, which allowed me to remove quite a lot of material in the groove. And once I'd done this for every 
section, I went over and rounded off the edges so that each section are, are more separate. It's not as smooth and obvious that it started as a cylinder since each section has been further detailed, further rounded off compared to, uh, but not compared to the total pumpkin, but compared to just that section is its own little cylinder thing. I'm not sure I'm explaining the intent very well here, but um, no matter. not yet time but once uh, the reason I started explaining uh, the wood burning process right now even though we're kind of far from that is that um, all of the planning for the wood burning and all of the tracing was done off stream uh, because uh, I was having fun designing the sigils and I wanted to add a lot more than I when I was designing the sigils I didn't have the pumpkin in front of me, so I went, I went a lot overboard with uh, how many sigils I planned to add. And once I had the pumpkin in front of me, I realized, oh, that's that can't work, the plan I was having. So I had to scale it back down a lot. And while I was scaling it, scaling it back, it just made sense to trace it as I went to make sure I truly had enough room. So there's just going to be suddenly a lot of lines traced on uh, with a pen sole on uh, this uh, pumpkin once we're at that point so now here you you see me widening the grooves and making the uh, what i was talking about the around the uh, making the sections the segments of uh, the uh, pumpkin more separate and uh, unique But this definitely was my favorite uh, project so far. It was a good balance of challenging and easy, a good balance of everything. So, um, and it happens to be seasonal, so uh, I'm. It may just be the mood of the season that affects me a bit and makes it a easier to appreciate the project but um, yeah I'm really happy about it I'm probably not going to be doing seasonal projects or uh, holiday projects often because um, the mood of the season doesn't always take me and uh, well I'm not going to do a project for the season just for a season just because it's a season if I'm not in the mood of it for it so uh, this year I happen to be in the mood for it I'm probably going to try to do this project in a bigger format eventually maybe not next year but at some point because uh, I would want to have a more complete uh, ritual pumpkin with all of the uh, sigils I designed initially I had a whole shard, a whole plan with, um, I think, 35 sigils, but I ended up doing a lot less. I'm not able to do mental maths that easily. Twenty-one. At 21 sigils, so 35 is not what the initial plan was. Because basically, or maybe, maybe. I, I, I haven't counted them. I just uh, did my multiplication. There, 
basically the final result was that I on this pumpkin I made three sigils by section for a total of 21 sigils but uh, initially uh, there would be four other sigils by sections two or four four I think so it would be more and 40 49 my initial plan had 49 sigils in total so uh, which couldn't fit in on this uh, well at least not on each segment since the segments weren't symmetrical some had less surface area than others and uh, that meant that it was not always possible S some segments could have had all seven sigils but uh, it didn't so N not all of them so i i preferred not to have it incomplete and have it seem complete well so i'm saying that but i did tell you it wasn't complete so that's kind of a moot point but here we are with all of them drawn and uh since i couldn't draw the sigils on the sides and only had the central sigils I decided to add horizontal bars to uh, in between each segments. Uh, that made it so that it looks kind of like a prison, like it's containing something, which I felt helped the mood a lot. And here I'm going to say which sigils I've drawn. So the first I drawn was uh, the one for create. I'm currently drawing the real because that's a segment for create real objects and those on the sides would have been uh, something of a section menu for which type of objects or something along those lines so create real, create real objects uh, I liked the idea of fra framing the uh, sigils while following the shape of the segment because that made it kind of like claws or uh, teeth uh, and really made it go with the creepy mood of a, a cult of a ritual pumpkin a cultists pumpkin so now this one is I because this is the spying uh, segment so uh, the central here is spy the top one is I and the bottom one is sight basically in the uh, world building of this um, thing of this pumpkin each segment is its own ritual in a way the plan was initially that the central one would be the uh, main core of said ritual said, said spell and the side ones would be uh, selectors or adjectives of sorts but I since I couldn't do that I, I left with a more uh, I don't know kind of more like a genie you select what kind of thing you want the genie to do and then you say it what tell it what target or something so it's not complete, but it was still very fun to design. So now here, the top sigil was uh, location. The central one is find. And the bottom one is feel. This one was basically Okay, I spied on some... The idea is, let's say the cultist that's using that as a spied on someone. Well, now he wants to know where they are. If it wasn't obvious from what he could see while spying them. So, that was kind of the difference. And... Um, 
when I made the sigils, sometimes just for the look, I decided when I felt like a specific sigil was kind of boring, I added random dots. Uh, that made it more esoteric, I guess. It, initially, I wanted to use a Google Image. Uh, I was went on Google Image and I typed uh, uh, esoteric symbols, but uh, I was uneasy about using symbols on the internet like that. I felt like I could draw something hateful accidentally, so uh, I didn't. Now, uh, this sigil is bind. That, that's not to bind a curse, but maybe to claim an object or something. So uh, the top one is to bind to that. The third one is that. That's more like to magically claim something as yours, not really to, uh, or at least I'll not, not to curse, not to bind a curse to someone, just to bind a thing to yourself or to someone. So uh, that's the world building, building reason for this segment, at least. I had a lot of fun with the world building for this, so I might do things like that more often. I don't. That's not a promise. That's just a, uh, a feeling I have that I might do that again. I had this idea of the sigils like that when I uh, was looking at Wikipedia for the meaning of some symbols. I was trying to look for symbols that were safe to use. So now this is the curse sigil. And the top one is four. And the bottom one is ever, so curse forever. Um, because why not? Normal. The idea here was that the side sigils would have been uh, to select what type of curse, but uh, there was no room for that again. So. Sorry for repeating myself. But uh, that's still going to be happening. Since I'm going uh, doing just one take, there's definitely going to be some rambling. So this is the summon. Um, this I'm not satisfied with the summon sigil. I don't like it a lot. Uh, the bottom, the bottom um, sigil here is power, and the top one is great. Though it's not legible the same way as the rest. I, I feel like I was kind of lazy with those sigils. I think it was the last one I designed. Last ones I designed. And uh, I don't like them as much as the rest. The plan here for the side sigils would have been that uh, there would be a... Maybe I summon an army. Maybe I summon just one powerful thing. Or summon either from above or below. Like angels or demons or things of that nature but uh i yeah you know the drill this is so the central sigil is, is slay this is the killing uh, segment i was really in the creepy mood so i did creepy things with that but that's because it's halloween so slay the target slay at the center V at the top and target at the bottom. And these are the last sigils I draw I drew here. For the side sigils here I was thinking something along the lines of uh, maybe how quick the death would be or something. I don't know. I uh, at that point I knew uh, I wouldn't have enough room or I, I realized it so I didn't really think much about what the other room sigils would be and uh, this normally I don't paint so far because I don't want to risk damaging my computer with water but here I only wanted to add one color so there was no water on my desk to uh, wash the uh, the brush 
in between color changes since there was the color changes because uh, the way I drew the bars made me think of a demon being trapped in it like the power source of this ritual pumpkin is a demon so painting it all big painting the background in red like it's the aura of the uh, demon being contained felt like a good idea um so that's what i did i don't think the color went through particularly well it looks a lot more orange in the video than it looks in real life um, I'm thinking this is mostly an issue with my camera or maybe I have some settings I need to adjust perhaps it's hard to tell but uh, I'll, I'll see this does though make me second, second guess my plan to plan to uh, paint on stream I'm think because if the paint generally is that as that different a color on camera compared to real life maybe it won't be as fun to paint on stream because it would look bad there but good on my side and it wouldn't feel as satisfying maybe I, there's going to have to i'm going to have to do some research on that eventually i'm not close to having my workshop ready to uh, paint but um regularly but uh it's some a worry I had since I filmed this section of the uh, project. Uh, the stem, I left it perfectly cylindrical, basically. I didn't detail it much more because I felt like it... I'd risk breaking it. it I, I would risk breaking it if I tried to do any more details on it, so I, uh, I just didn't. And it's fine, like that, like a uh, little cylinder. It still looks like a good pumpkin. And with that, we're basically done. Soon, uh, I'm going to start showing the finished product. I'm going to rotate it so that you can see a better view of all the uh, sigils and the paint. And uh, yeah, with that, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to come by whenever you want. Bye.